Welcome back to another episode, guys. Now, in the last exciting episode, we finally um, uh, deployed a, a minting contract. Um, we finally created an NFT, and we were able to integrate that into Unity and actually download data from uh, the metadata that you guys see here. So now the next step is going to be to actually validate the token ownership, which is the script here, and then pretty much change off-chain logic based on on uh, on-chain validation so super important just before we get started with this um, I want to go back to the NFT manager because I did actually miss a piece in the previous episode after we actually <laughs> after we get the balance and we check the balance and do stuff based on that this is the token URI this is a very good point to talk about as well this entire function is based around getting the information from this URL we want to deserialize it or break it down into chunks and get the JSON information. We want to be able to grab every bit of information here, which is what we effectively do with this with this function. Let me just minimize this. So you'll see that this is where the debug comes in, where we attempt to call the smart contract for the token URI. We're going to call the URI method, which is again just a read method, same as before. Um, and we've actually done this here before already. So we're calling this method, we're sending a token to check, which is token ID one, or whichever token ID you create and then call on the front end here. Um, and then after that happens, it's gonna spit out the token URI, which we already know what it is. We know that it's that like IPFS chain safe one. The next step then, after we fetch that URL, is to actually create a web request, a standard Unity web request to deserialize it. After we deserialize that URI, um, we can use JSON convert to deserialize the object itself. So this little string right here, which will then spit out these bits and bobs of information. So like the token name, the description, the image, the score multiplier, which you would have seen in the, uh, the JSON uh, URL. Now, it's super, super important to remember, whenever you work with these bits of information, whether it's like JSON involved, or you need to deserialize an object, always create an object class. So you'll see here that this is our JSON class that we need to uh, use to fetch a matching data. It's super important that these here need to match uh, the actual, they need to match, they need to match this. It needs to be name, it needs to be description, it needs to be image, it needs to be score multiplier. So if you've got something like damage, you would pretty much do something like this and rename this to, to damage. Like it, it just has to match. It has to match what, what you're trying to fetch. Let me just say that again. And so with this class, token data, after we get the URI, we create this, oh, where has it gone now? This token data variable called token data, and we declare it as a JSON convert deserialized object, token data, and we use the system text encoding just because we are using the web requests handler um, to, to get that information. So usually this is unnecessary but because we're dealing with ipfs it's a bit of a, a hassle so we need to use that that's why this looks so extreme um, but after you do this one liner here you'll have access to all the information that you need um, and you can even do this in bulk so you can just do like a for loop if you've got multiple tokens that you want to go through as well that's kind of like the biggest thing and now you may be wondering where the hell did the windows xp photo um, apply in game well, this is this, this is this function here. After we actually get the URI and we get the token image URL, which again, is just another another link, another URL. We then go again and we use a Unity web request and we get the texture using that URL. The URL that we're passing is the token image URL here, which is the token data dot image, which if we go one step back, is this URL here. And then of course it just pretty much applies it to the raw image as a texture and we'll be using the same method to apply this to the marble exactly the same way it's the same method twice we're doing it the same thing twice pretty much so let's move on today let's go back to the event system i'll minimize this because we already know what we want to do here we'll smack it validate token ownership script in here open it up and this is really off-chain logic based on on-chain validation so if we go back to the nft manager based on uh, where is it based on this token balance based on if we own this skin if it's true or false we use this script 
to handle a whole bunch of off-chain stuff. For instance, if a player owns the on-chain token, we make the custom skin available. So if we own the skin, uh, if we if we own the skin, um, we'll be uh, removing everything that's related to minting, and we'll only allow the player to apply the skin to his to his um, his little ball. Otherwise, if we don't own the skin, this is where the the price comes into play. So you'll see that the token price from the NFT manager, that token price that you guys specified right here so this token price right here this is what's going to be used in that script to to uh, provide it to provide a price so if i go play now it's going to tell me that i don't own this nft which is fair i don't but if i go customize i can unlock this for two and a half thousand balls perfect that's great now the very very last step after this whole validation thing is to actually mint the asset how do we mint this asset pretty easy question right so we've got another script here which is our very very last script for the tutorial it is the mint asset now the mint asset is again quite a beefy script but it is effectively just a write method it's a write method for where is it this now so far in the tutorial we we've done a few writes now so you should understand that it's the same boilerplate code. We just change the arguments out and then refactor the function a little bit here and there to make it work. Um, again, the script is like 80% like comments, so it might look a little bit overwhelming, but let's go ahead. Let's drop that mint, uh, mint asset script into the event system. Okay, so we are met with two things. And this ties into a previous episode when we first did a write to claim our rewards. There was no screen validation. There was no kind of you know status screen. There was nothing really telling the player what was happening. It was all just kind of happening in the browser and it didn't look very nice. So what this script has, it actually has a transaction window object. So this has been here all along. We just, we've never touched it because I kind of wanted to leave this to the end um, to show you guys what they would look like. So we need to assign a transaction window object and a transaction status object. Pretty straightforward. Let's assign it. If we go to the game object, we can go transaction window and then transaction, oops. Hang on, have I played myself? Okay, it's called TX status. So transaction status, TX status, which if you go to the left under the menu canvas, it's actually there's a transaction window there there's a, a game object that's inactive it's this one right here transaction in progress um that's a transaction window object and there's a transaction status text object as well that you can just drag into into the event system here but now effectively what's happened let's open this function let's go yes it's fine this script is effectively used to mint so the sole purpose of this script is to to basically invoke that mint method to mint that token so again just leave this this is just pretty much the editor stuff you can play around with it if you want um, but i also commented it in quite a bit of detail what the flow looks like so we start off by transferring our custom currency to the specific address of choice we check the transaction if it's approved we evoke the mint method and the user then owns the skin and can use it in game now there are better ways of doing this but this is just for this demo and this tutorial the easiest way of doing it so let's start off by calling a transfer from a connected wallet. So you'll see that I've got a function here called pay for skin, which is read. It's a read method. Um, you'll see that we're going to be invoking transfer. So if we go back to, to uh, Solidity here, our ball contract, our token contract, will be invoking the transfer function because we want to transfer our ball tokens from a connected wallet to our specified address. In my case, I'm using the reward pool so that when players purchase skins, that money goes straight back into a reward pool that people can use to claim if they have their rewards or whatnot. You don't necessarily have to do that. But for me, that means that this is all self-sustained, at least for the long run-ish. I don't know. In-game economics is a whole different conversation. Um, but let's get back to Unity. Let's get back to the script. And you can see that it requires two arguments who uh, will be receiving the amount of that you pay and how much. So for instance, the two will be the contract manager or the, sorry, the reward contract to so my reward pool. But this doesn't need to be this. It can be your own wallet. It can be a private wallet. Who do you want this to go to? Then you've got the amount, which in this case is going to be the token price. Plus, of course, our token decimals. Don't forget token decimals. 
similar thing hopefully this has like been drilled into your head by now create our contract data and then we do a call because it's a write we do call data again read as call write as call data we pass two integers a big integer for the amount like we've done with like the get token and the claim rewards we need to use big integer because it's too big to use an integer and then the two is just the um, the address here similar thing leave gas limits as optional value is zero because it's not a chain native uh, currency and again we'll just try to submit the transaction so in this case this transaction here is going to um, effectively um, have a player send his tokens to the reward contract um, and because this new sdk has um, an await function already in here um, it will await the transaction to be successful before proceeding so which is good because the old one you had to manually check it and it was like a pain in the ass um, but we can call this response, wait for feedback, and then pretty much just update the transaction status to say, look, the payment was sent successfully, please wait, and then we can invoke our min function. However, if it fails because there's not enough currency or the player rejects the, uh, the transaction, we can just call or invoke the failed transaction, which means it's gonna spit out failed, and then that's pretty much it. Uh, moving on, after the player sends his tokens, we'll be minting. Minting is exactly the same as the transfer because it's a write method it's very generic we just change the method from transfer to mint this method requires four arguments two as in who should receive this the token id that we're trying to mint in my case it's going to be one uh, the amount is how much you want to mint in this case it's also just one just read the comments it's pretty self-explanatory and the data object now you would have noticed that in, in um, solidity we actually have to pass data like a data object uh, to mint this is usually if you've got pre-configured data or contract data that you want to pass here, um, you would do that. But in our case, we just want this to be zero. We're not passing anything. So in bytes, zero x zero zero means zero. So that's why in the script itself, we have to pass it as a data object and then include uh, the zero x zero zero for the bytes. Cool. So again, similar thing, contract data for the NFT contract, create a, create the contract data, do the call. So it's a write call data read is call remember that and we'll pass our arguments integer pass the token id because it's an integer and then pass the amount as well because it's one it's just one token so it's an integer as well and we just pass our object and who wants it as well uh gas price optional value optional try to send the transaction this is the min transaction itself we can change the transaction status if it's successful um, in which case after that we'll actually go ahead and check the nft data again but the game will check the wallet once more check if it owns um, the token validate the ownership of that token and then eventually close the transaction window otherwise if it fails we fail the transaction and you can see here just it's just um, an invoke method here that i use to give it some time uh, in between each call so that it doesn't happen like all at once because if you effectively check the token again after just minting it it's going to fail a hundred percent because the transaction is still processing on the blockchain so let's just scroll down here we've got the closed transaction window here the failed transaction window here and then just the validate balance so all these things here are just kind of game based logic however actually this is a pretty good one to know um it's, this is just some quick dirty off-chain validation so that you know if someone doesn't have enough of like the off-chain currency they can't actually mint uh, the nft so we're really just basically enabling and disabling a button in this case the mint button if a player's current balance uh their current token balance isn't more than the price of a token um, it's off chain it's not ideal but it's just another layer of protection against people trying to brute force their way into into your game so let's try it <laughs> let's see what happens when we actually try this uh, for that i'm gonna leave this window here like so cool give it a moment let's do this customize we'll try to mint it we'll see if it's going to allow us to complete the pending payment there we go two and a half thousand bls or balls we'll confirm that go back here it's going to ask us to do the mint because remember the flow we pay first and then we mint so it's received those tokens which means we can now mint our ball so we can go copy go back token mint successful we should see apply happen any moment now anytime yes there we go that means it's double check the data and it's confirmed that we now own that token let's go ahead and let's apply this to the ball 
Bam, look at that. We got a Windows XP ball. We're balling, boys. So, you can do this for anything. You can create any amount of skins for your in game assets and use the token metadata to pull that information in. Um, just super important to know that if we go back and we go play, you should see your ball in game now and you can use your custom skin in here. So, let's go ahead, let's get out of this. I just wanted to take you guys through one more bit here in the menu canvas in the customize canvas um, under the panel there is an apply button just make super sure that under the event system you've got the um, the correct method in this case the method we want to be invoking uh, when applying a token is where is it where is it where is it where is it this one right here we want to invoke the invoke marble enumerator, which is this one right here. So if we go back into here and we check the apply button, I'll just screenshot this for you guys so that you know what's up. It's the NFT manager script and under the NFT manager script, there's a method called invoke marble enumerator. We need to assign this to that button in order for it to apply the skin that we've downloaded to that ball there. Uh, and then one last thing, you would have seen that whole token process, uh, the whole pending um, transaction processing screen, the, the transaction window. If you go back to your uh, claim rewards, you may have noticed that um, there was one bit in here that said to not touch the, the code down below that was commented out because we needed to wait until the minting video, which is this right here. This would have been like this. You can safely go ahead now and uncomment this. So uncomment all the mint assets that you saw before. So this one here, if it's if it's been commented like this, you can go ahead and uncomment it. What this will do is it's actually then gonna go with, um, uh, it's actually gonna show up the transaction window when you do the claim rewards as well. I've effectively kept it until the very, very end just to kind of show you guys um, how you can add smaller components to help bigger components with Web3. For instance, when we claimed initially, if you go watch that episode again, um, there was nothing. Everything was being shown in the browser, which isn't great. So introducing a transaction window with a minting um, is, is super cool. It's a cool way of letting your player know what is happening. You know, is your, your transaction processing? Um, what's going on with it effectively? But on this note, you guys have effectively turned this two, uh, Web 2 game into a Web 3 game by finalizing your minting functionality today. Um, I'll just conclude everything in the last episode for this series um, but it's genuinely been a pleasure going through this uh, it hasn't been perfect I would have wanted to be a little bit quicker and shorter but these topics really do require some some talking um, otherwise it just doesn't make sense thank you for watching guys I genuinely hope it was helpful if you liked it please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the final episode for the series